Alright. Hey guys, um, just streaming from the studio real quick and we'll post it. It might get cut a little short. We had a tree fall. Um, Tropical Storm Zeta came through last night and took down a tree and it's laying on the fence so our goats can escape, but they're good now. So let's have a quick fun little studio time before my brother gets here with the chainsaw. <laughs> so I have some azurite and two pieces of labradorite that I am wanting to set. Um, so I'm just gonna get started and I cannot see while I'm working. So if you have any questions or anything, unfortunately I won't be able to, um, let's see. So first I'm gonna pick out a gauge of silver wire that I want to work with and I want to go a little bit thick with these guys because they're kind of big and I'm going to do like a, a fat halo of stardust around them. So. so this one's um, nice and easy because it's a circle and I can just get my mandrel out and kind of help me to form that with the ovals or pear shapes. Um, kind of have to eyeball it and do it by hand and use what I can. I just want to say I will be going live again tomorrow, but it will be a live trunk show. I'm going to be featuring some beautiful blue pieces and 20% of the sales um, will go towards a, a local charity, a local community charity group that my friend has started here from my church, um, making care pack, it, they do tons of stuff, but um, right now they're focusing on care packages for the local homeless. So like when you stop at a um, stop sign and you, or drag light, and you see somebody in need holding a sign or something like that, and you I'm, I mean, how many times has this happened to us? And you like want to give them something, but maybe you don't have cash, maybe you don't want to give them cash. Um, so she's putting together care packages to keep in your car to hand out when you run across people in need. And I just thought that that was the coolest thing. Um, that's something that my heart has felt um, called to do. All right, a little noise here as I cut this. I mean, and it's so often something that you can think about wanting to do and then out of sight, out of mind. Woo, sorry, giving you guys some motion sickness. I'm just gonna check and make sure you can see. So, um, I work in Argentium silver. It's basically like sterling silver, only it's got a higher silver content and they alloy it. So they mix it with some different metals um, to make it basically just a much better metal. Um, it doesn't get fire scale, which if you've ever worked with sterling silver, you might um, have experienced that. It's where if you don't use enough flux or if you heat it wrong or whatever, it gets these nasty purple splotches and you usually can't get rid of them. Oop. It's been almost a week since I've sat at my bench so my torch is getting warmed up for the first time in a while. And you'll notice I'm not using any solder. I am fusing the metal. So basically that's making it a lot stronger. It will be one solid piece. Um, solder melts at a lower temperature than the metal that you're using. And it is great for when you get a lot of intricate little pieces in there. But I like to start with fusing um, because it makes a stronger piece overall, especially with the thicker parts um, because they're usually the ones holding, holding the strength and having to be nice and strong. So that's nice and fused, one solid piece. Hello. Hello. Malachi's in the studio today. So I like to work on more than just one piece at a time because after I heat a piece up, 
I toss it in this little miniature pickle pot over here. Sorry, it's off camera. Doot, doot, doot. Um, and it gets all of the flux off, which is what I've been painting on it. And the flux basically creates like a glass barrier between the oxygen and the metal. And even though the argentium doesn't really have a problem with that, not like traditional silver, it's still not, it's, it needs a little, a little help. So I need some more silver. There it is. I get all of my silver from Rio Grande or Rio Grande. They have, I, they're one of the few places that carry argentium. And I love the company. The customer service is awesome. And they're out west. I love supporting American businesses. As I am one. All right. So let's keep it in the Labradorite family. This one is so fiery. This one's going to get a little bit of yellow gold added to it. So like I said, I don't have a round ming, ming mandrel, ring mandrel. <laughs> so I don't have a pear shaped ring mandrel, I have a round. So I kind of like have learned that I can use my round ring mandrel to kind of start, and I'm trying to get this so you can see, to kind of shape the pear. This is a funky cut. I don't really use calibrated gemstones, which means um, this isn't a perfect pear shape because um, the bottom is a little bit flat. It's an irregular or non-calibrated, but I think that gives them more personality. Um, like ovals, you know, there's all different shapes and sizes of ovals. Same thing with pear shapes. I mean, a round is basically, you would think, is a round is a round, but uh, there's some pretty wonky rounds <laughs> out there. So they're never quite perfectly circular. Well, sometimes. It's all over the board. That's a little bit too big. So I'm going to be hammering this up a lot. So I don't need all of this to be the right size from the get-go. Let's see. Woo! All right. Safe place. Chop, chop. Right, so this tiny little saw blade can do some damage. So I want to keep my finger out of the way. I have cut this finger so many times. There we go. It can cut bone. It can cut titanium. <laughs> It can cut silver, it can cut gold. All right, these pliers are great. They're like, I believe they're called bow benders. And I think traditionally watchmakers use them. But in the jewelry industry, we borrow tools and ideas all the time. A lot of our techniques are borrowed from the dental industry. So it's kind of fun, like I have a couple of dentist friends that uh, I can talk shop with. <laughs> a lot of similar tools and a lot that aren't. And it's kind of cool. Casting is very similar, having to do with like the gold um, crowns and, and caps and all that good stuff. And polishing your teeth and stuff. They have some smaller hand tools because they have to get in your mouth. Um, there we go. Heating it up also makes the metal softer and easier to work with. I love that sound. <laughs> so now I'm gonna go back while my pear sits. I'm gonna work with my round. And as you can see, it's not round and that's fine because when I'm soldering it, I don't care too much about what shape it is. I'll smack it into shape but it's about getting those ends to meet up. So we can, sorry, it's off camera, but well, maybe I can bring it over here. So 
So I'm going around and getting it round this way, but then you can see it's not exactly flat this way. So I'm gonna have to take it off. So it's kind of like that, yeah? Um, and smack it down flat like this. So you can see it's still quite small um, and that's fine. I'm wanting to flatten this. Oh no, I'm sorry, my hook just came off. Um, we'll just readjust. There you go. Don't get too dizzy. Ooh. All right, so um, I could hit this and hammer this and flatten it out, but I recently inherited an amazing rolling mill that is going to save me so much time and energy. So I'm basically gonna roll it through the rolling mill in a couple different directions to help kind of flatten it and get it to where I want because I want this to be like a flat halo that goes around it. Um, so I will be doing that in just a few minutes. Um, and I'll be doing the same here with this one. Now, the third piece that I'm working on today, uh, this azurite, this one's not gonna have, so basically the two labradorites are gonna have visible silver going around it. For this one, it's just gonna be like a traditional head. So basically, it's gonna be sitting on this and you won't see it. So it'll be the perfect size and shape of the outline of the stone and have prongs that come up around because we're going to do something fancy with how it attaches to the chain. So this one, I want to be exacting. So you can do a little bit of a smaller. I'm gonna file this flat. Measure twice, cut once. Going well. I'm gonna go a little bit smaller though, I think. Because I am gonna hammer it just a little bit because I want it to have a flat. This is round wire that I'm working with, but I want it to be flat where the stone sits because I want it to feel right at home. You know, it's like making the perfect pair of custom shoes. And in this case, the mounting is the sh are the shoes and the gemstone is the foot <laughs> so i guess today's theme is just relating what i do to other other people <laughs> other people's craft all right i i like that that's good for me so and the way that's fitting up i'm gonna clip it and file it the other thing i really love about working with this alloy argentium is that um, it doesn't have to always if you're fusing it fuses and melts so well that you don't have to have the joints as perfect as you do when you're working with traditional silver or um, gold because it kind of just melds and fills in it's almost like working with wax or clay it just loves being formed and fused and all that good stuff. So time for a little more heat. I'm using propane and then add oxygen to make it hot. Well, sometimes it chokes it, there we go. And then the hottest part of this flame, there's like a softer cone here, but the tip of that blue is the hottest. I'm gonna add a little more fuel and oxygen. Here we go. I'm getting it hot. Wee, And I'm gonna just get the whole piece kind of annealed so it's easier to work with. And I can work it a little bit longer. So you can make metal hard again by bending it, hammering it. Um, and I believe there's a way to do it with heat where you can temper it. I think that's something that is done, especially with steel. I have not done it because I usually just I'm um, hammering things so that works for me. All right, so going back to the labradorite. 
So I think this is about the right size, but like I said, it's gotten a little funky because I was trying to get those ends to meet. So, even though I don't have a pear-shaped mandrel, I can use the round part of this ring mandrel and it is nice standard round. And we can kind of hand shape the flat bottom because this is almost like a triangle rather than a pear shape. Um, but I come in here with my pliers. I would not just come in with pliers like this on a piece that I wasn't gonna do a lot more forging with because every time you touch it with these pliers, you leave a mark behind and that's not good. You don't wanna leave tool marks on your piece. So I, I've got a lot more hammering and stuff to do that's gonna remove that as I forge it and smash it and all that good stuff. So check it from the front check from the back we're doing pretty good as far as that shape and like I said I'm probably gonna run this through the rolling mill like with the round one just because it kind of helps to speed that up a little bit yeah yeah sweet so that one's ready to go through this one's ready to go through Here's for our azurite, and that's looking pretty good. I'm just gonna kind of like form it to fit there a little bit better. So I don't want to mar this one with my tools, so I'm gonna be gentle. There's a couple different things you can do. These are not my favorite. They're nylon pliers. Um, they've got like the nylon around them. They're nice, you can't really do much with them. And they get all uh, bent and junked up. You can also wrap your pliers with um, tape or gator tape as I like to call it which is also great to wrap your fingers with when you're polishing because it gets really hot the metal gets hot from the friction of the polisher so we're doing pretty good I want to open this up a little bit so I'm gonna use my round nose pliers and that's gonna be fine that's not gonna do anything um, bad the way I'm using it here because I'm making a shoe for this all right, so we're getting pretty dang close. Um, it's just a little bit small, and like I said, I wanted to make it flat. So I'm just going to hammer it with my favorite hammer. And this is a cross peen, and that's because it's cross peening. <laughs> um, so you hit it like this, and it gives it this really cool like uh, hammer texture. I use it a lot on my gold pieces because they it gives them a nice sparkle, and I do it a lot on the backs of silver pieces. It's kind of like a halo effect. It looks like there's lots of little stones because of how brightly I polish it afterwards. Um, this is an unpolished version of it in yellow gold. Let's see if you can see it. So it gets it gets really shiny when you polish it. But just to kind of give you an idea, so that's like the before and after with the texture. So here's the silver. Let's make it shiny. Spark. you can see that quite changes it. So this will be the part that's on the back and then this is a little bit more flattened and this is where the stone will sit just like so. And I can see just a little bit of silver from the front. Maybe you want to see a little bit more. But this is where my prongs will attach and I'll fuse them on the sides and it'll hold it in. So um, let's 
let's let's install some prongs. So first, I want to pick out a good size. The stone is pretty pillowy. Um, it isn't a necklace, so it's not gonna need as much protection as if it were in a ring. But I feel like this is what is this? 16 gauge. I feel like that's too thin. Um, I might just do. Let's see. 14 gauge. I think would be nice. Let me get some fresh 14. And again, this is round. Um, I do things a little bit different. Sometimes people will do flat. Um, but I like to do this because what I'll do is I'll cut a notch in the head so that this fits perfectly. And then it has more contact when it gets soldered in there. And we'll solder the prongs instead of fusing. Um, but it's plenty strong because it will have a little groove for the prong to sit in. And then after that, I will have to sand the inside of this prong flat because when the prong sits on the stone, you want it to make as much contact with the stone as possible so that it's, you know, it's a lot stronger than if you have like two rounds, it's not much contact. But if you think of like Lincoln logs and it's like locking in, it's a lot stronger. I probably could explain that a little bit <laughs> easier. All right, so I wanna get a bit that is, um, let's see, and I marked it, this is 16 gauge, this is probably 14 gauge. I want this to be the same size as the wire because they're puzzle pieces. So off screen, I'm just dipping it, there you go, into a bit of oil um, because you wanna keep your oil, um, you wanna keep your tools lubricated so they don't get um, dull. <laughs> Before I do this, I'm going to mark where I want them to be. Okay. That way I can get it just right. Yeah. I think I'm going to do four prongs. Here we go. I want them all the same depth. And the bit likes to try to get away. So you have to be firm. dark background and they look nice and even so I am ready to install some prongs so let's make some prongs um let's see I don't like to waste metal so I like to know roughly okay I need this much let's use that it can all be recycled and refined but it does still take energy and materials to refine and recycle metal. So I like to not have to refine it if I can avoid it. All right, let me see. Let me move this so you can see just a little bit better. All right, so here we go. Woo! Maybe I'll get something with a little less spring action for you next time. <laughs> All right, so flux. And flux the prongs. And I need to cut some solder. So I'm gonna use medium. There's easy, medium, and hard, but I have discovered that the um, hard solder does not work well with the argentium at least for me it would always just i don't know it's like you had to get the metal too hot and it would burn off the other metals or something and it just it would always break so it wasn't a strong connection 
So I start with medium. Well, I start with fusing, and then I go to medium, and then I go to easy. All right. So I have discovered a few ways to make this efficient for myself. So I could pick up the solder, put it on the piece, and then grab the prong and stuff. But I pick up the prong, heat it up, grab the solder, and then bring it over all in one fell swoop. Hot, I need more heat, there we go. And you see this beautiful flash of metal when the solder flows. And it follows the heat, so if I ever need to train it, I can tell it where to go with the torch. Woo, moved a little bit, that's all right. Can you turn the air conditioner down in here? Thank you. It's so hot today. It's October, but it's like 80 degrees. It's crazy. Tropical storm. If you didn't catch it earlier, um, so we're basically going to work until my brother shows up with a chainsaw to help us chop a tree uh, that the storm took out last night. And it's laying on the fence, uh, but the goats haven't gotten out. Hennessy escaped. <laughs> we got him back. He thought he was going to have a grand old time running around in the woods. <laughs> so after I dip this in the pickle pot, I dip it in water just to get the acid off. Um, so here's the head. We do have extra metal at the back, but we'll take that off. I will sometimes just come in with some clippers. And you'll see me holding it. It's because when you clip it, it goes flying. And it's it's precious metal, so I don't want it to go away. I save every little piece. I save every piece of dust that I can. All right, here's some sanding. I'm going live again tomorrow at 1.30 and I'll be showing you some um, beautiful blue pieces. Um, this one probably won't be done, so that probably won't be in there. But 20% of all sales there and on my website will be uh, given to um, Jacob's Well. It's my friend's outreach uh, that she's doing right now to help homeless people in the area she's putting together care packages that she can um, have in her car that we can have in her car when we stop at a red light or something and there's a homeless person there we can give them a care package and I just love I love that outreach idea um, I also have a piece picked out to do for a live auction tomorrow and 100% of that will go to the cause so super excited to be doing that um, so this head is basically ready um, the stone doesn't quite fit in there yet, but I know just from experience that once I sand those edges flat, it will slide in there like the perfect glass slipper. Um, so I'm going to leave it. That's a finishing step for me. And I'm going to work on the next part. So I said this is going to have an exciting and fun way to attach to the chain. So you might have seen my wreath, wreath designs before. Let me see if I have yeah. an example. So all this twisted and forged metal. Um, instead of having a circle at the top, it's going to be opened up like a mantle. So it's going to go off like a V, um, and like have a wreath growing in either direction. So now you get to see top secret behind the scenes. How does that happen? <laughs> I'm just kidding. There's no top secret behind the scenes. I'm pretty much an open book. <laughs> um, so I want, so this is going to be the starting part. I want it to be about... And this is square stock that I'm using now. Um, so instead of being round like your traditional wire, it's uh, square shaped. And so when you twist it, you get a really beautiful effect or look. 
So I want to start here and I'm going to measure about two inches on either side. And this will go right there. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and twist that and I want it to be a mirror image. So I'm going to hold here and twist here. So you can see that beautiful shape. It's um, you've probably seen it in ironwork, a similar shape or form, like, um, see, I'm like twist it in the same direction. And one more twist here. Cool. All right. So this is a very uh, freestyle and fun sort of a design to work with. Um, but I'm trying to make, make it somewhat symmetrical, not necessarily really symmetrical, but like equally balanced on either side uh, for weight and visual balance. So I'm cutting some branches and I'm just going to kind of lay them out while I have my torch running and do it like that. We have projects going on. I wish I could hear you guys or see this while I'm working on it. You can see it, right? Cool. All right. Hot time. All right. So this is all going to be fused. So I don't need to pick up solder or mess with that. And kind of just lay it in, let it melt. This is going to look like some funky antlers. Don't want to get it too hot and totally erase the um, edges of the square stock. There we go. And then let's do one on the inside. I'm going to cut a few more pieces. It's kind of like design and, and work as you go on this. It's a little bit easier to visually balance something when you have more elements. If you have very limited, very simple, minimalist design you're working with, um, every little piece is has more more importantly needs to be carefully considered and and thought out. Alright, here's a few more little pieces. Rinse, repeat. All right, let's get another one up here. Okay. And then I think I want to do just a little extra down here. So I'm going to do this one directly off of another branch. And that'll be great. So then my next step is to kind of wash the whole thing over with my flame because I'm going to twist and form everything. Really just focusing on the new pieces that I've added. And then I'm going to melt the ends to give them that little bit of a finished look. So let's pop this off. It does get stuck to the um, to the block because of all the melted. There we go. How's that? Woo! It is hot, so I don't want to drop it on myself. So here we go. I think you can see. So there's that big blob there. That's the flux. So it's just becoming like glass. My hands shake when I drink too much tea.
I'm gonna make these just a little bit bigger. Let's see, and these guys. Melty schmelty. All right, so this is gonna go sit in the pickle and get all that flux off. Yeah. Um, so then we'll kind of forge those and form them and get them into shape. Um, I don't need to add a way to attach this. I want this to fring swing freely um, off of this. So. Today, All right. It's not totally cleaned off, but I'm not hammering it, so it's okay. Um, if I was hammering it and it still had some flux on it, that would be an issue because I'd be pressing the flux into the metal and giving it funky marks. So I'm twisting these. Funky marks, that's the technical term right there. So now it's really starting to look wild. You can hear the flux crackling. Now we have this fun stuff. So it will be like this. Now I do like to bring these in because this is gonna catch everything when you're wearing it. Um, so it is important to think about how is this gonna function as a piece that somebody is wearing and it needs to be, it needs to be comfortable. It needs to not be a pain in the neck, that sort of a thing. So I'm kind of just bringing them in, and it's a cool look. I love it. So those will be done. And then. That just comes together, doesn't it? It's kind of crazy. And so then that piece will be down here. So now I need to make all of these fused to where their touch points are. Um, so I'm gonna add a little more flux. Lots of flux. All right. And hot. I love having this little turntable thing. So this silver is really fun. It kind of moves when it gets hot, it relaxes. You have to be gentle though, because it, it will break. It's fragile when it's um, hot. It likes to act like a sandcastle. All right, let's pick it up and move it. So I don't move it when it's really hot or a piece will break off. It's okay we can fix it so I melted this little part here but that is okay because I can replace it so here's another piece of the same and it's twisted It's kind of nice when somebody's showing you how to do something and something goes wrong. Um, I've taken some classes 
and nothing goes wrong. And then of course the first time you try it, something goes wrong and it's just like, okay, what do I do? Um, so I replaced that, I attached it right here. I'm gonna clip it and reattach it. It's not always this simple. <laughs> In the past, like in my 15 years leading up to this point, um, this would be something that would take me just as long to fix as it would to start all over again. And so sometimes I would just start all over again. And I was told that that's not giving myself a chance to grow. That to be a good jeweler, you need to know how to fix your mistakes so that you can't tell you ever made them. Um, and that's how you know you've arrived. <laughs> that's a new level. Um, and so I stopped doing that and I fixed my mistakes. And guess what? It's a lot faster now. <laughs> a lot faster. And a lot better. And a lot less wasteful. All right, so I've got some jump rings to attach here and then I'll be um, tumbling it, setting it, polishing it, of course, attaching it to a stone. Um, I mean, a chain, attaching it to a stone. You know what I mean. Anyway, thank you for joining me. I'm gonna flip this around so you can see me. Can I do that? I can do that. Okay. Hi, thanks for joining me. Um, I know this was just a quick little studio time. But it's always fun, and I'll be back at 1.30 tomorrow with um, blue gemstones to show you. And like I said, we're donating 20% to Jacob's Well to uh, reach out to the homeless in our area. So thanks for joining me. If there's ever anything you want to see me make, any secrets you want to know, hit me up. Let me know. I am happy to share them with you. Thank you so much, guys. Bye.